Okay, so we got our next step then. The BGB peers are up. Okay, now our last step is going to be the customer to service provider routing. So previously I'd done a BGB peering between router 2 and router 10. We're basically going to extend this beyond the, the rest of the devices, add these, uh, these same types of, of peerings. So here we're going to next peer between, uh, we'll say between router 1 and 5. So from router 1, this is going to be under the VRF. Router BGB1, address family is IPv4, VRF A. The neighbor is going to be 10, 1, 5, 5. They're in AS 456. And from router 5's point of view, router BGB 456, we're going to appear with 10, 5, no, uh, 10, 1, 5, 1. They're in AS 1. And we'll say redistribute connected. Okay, from router 4's point of view, it's going to be peering with XR1. So neighbor is going to be 10, 4, 11, 11. And we'll redistribute connected. From XR1's point of view, since this is an eBGB peering, what else do we need to do besides establishing just the basic peer? So for the basic peering config, we would say under BGB1, under the VRF A, the address family is IPv4, unicast, we're enabling globally. Then under the neighbor, the neighbor would be 10, 4, 11, 4. The remote AS is 456. And also what? Since this is an eBGB neighbor, we need to apply a route policy. Okay, so the route policy is going to be under the address family IPv4 unicast under the peer. Route dash policy, we need to define it. Okay, so let's say the route policy is pass, and it says just to pass. Okay, then we go back to BGP, VRF, and let's say show config. Show config. So if we paste this back in under the neighbor, under the address family, route dash policy pass gets applied outbound and inbound. Okay, we would have the same config that's going out towards router 8, which is going to be in uh, AS8914. So let's say that under router BGB1, we have under VRFB, we have the address family. We have the neighbor, which is going to be 10... 10.8.11.8. The remote AS is 8914. And same policy. Okay, so we're running IPv4 unicast, and then we're accepting updates in from them, except uh, sending updates out. Okay, so here's the full PE to CE routing config. Okay, we commit this, and then this is going to be similar to what we're going to configure on XR3. So from XR3, it's going out to router 14, which is XR4. So the config is going to be similar here. We're going to have the route policy. We have the VRF, which in this case is B. We have the neighbor address, which is 13, 14, 14. And then the rest of the config is the same. Okay, from XR4's point of view, it's doing this peering in the global routing table. So the config is the same, except we have a different global AS, we have a different remote AS, and we're not defining this under the VRF, we're defining this just under the global process. So again, it's a very template-driven config. I would say that you want to do most of this as, as most as you can in Notepad, and it also helps you to, to kind of memorize what the syntax is, so you're not constantly having to check the question mark or referencing the documentation in order to do these core configs. 
So we'll see later, once we get into more advanced options, you don't need to necessarily memorize everything, but anything that's related to just core connectivity, ideally you want to be able to get that done as quickly as possible. And I think that we have, which one? I think we have one more on router three. Okay, so router three is going to be running router BGP one. Address family IPv4 VRFB, it's going to be peering with the neighbor, I don't know, A. Uh, it's going to be peering with the neighbor 10377, who is an AS7. And then router 7 will be doing router BGP7. Uh, 10373. And we just should be connected. Okay, let's see. Did I put that peering also on 8? Uh, no. Okay, so 8 is running BGP 8914. Neighbor is going to be 10-8-11-11. And Rita should be connected. Okay, also on XR4, let's advertise its prefixes. Basically, same exact way we did it to the other one. So let's show run router BGP. We're going to go under the global address family IPv4 unicast. and then redistribute connected. Okay, the next thing we want to see is are the PE routers receiving the updates in from the customers? Now, I haven't configured yet the very last step, which is going to be the route target import and export policy. So this means that when we look at the BGP updates, we should see that the PE routers are going to be receiving nothing. Now, there will be currently only one exception to this, which is on router one, actually no, on router one and XR1, because they're both configured as VPN v4 route reflectors. So what I mean by this specifically is if we were to go to all of the iOS routers and look at the show BGP VPN v4 unicast all, we would see that on router two and router three, we are uh, receiving updates in, but we're not yet going to be exchanging them over the L3 VPN. So we're learning the local customer routes but we're not yet uh, we are not yet receiving the remote ones. However, from router one's point of view, since it is a route reflector, it should be receiving everything. So specifically in this case, our, our customer edges are four, five, 10, seven, eight, and 14. So we have four, five, seven, eight, 10, and 14. Okay, we can see they're separated based on their route distinguisher. But again, the route distinguisher does not control the VPN membership. I'll show an example here of when they're overlapping between multiple VPNs, even though they don't have the same uh, route distinguisher. So same should be true on XR1. And when we show BGP, VPN v4 unicast, we should be receiving all of the routes from all of the, uh, all of the customer routers. So if we show BGP, VPN v4 unicast summary, Let's see, we're not receiving updates from 1, 2, 3, or 13. Why not? Let's say show run router BGP. Receive prefixes is zero. This is, actually we'll see this behavior is a little bit different in regular iOS versus iOS, iOS XR. But uh, as I mentioned, typically one of the last steps is going to be to do a redistribution. So redistribution between the customer's routes and the provider's routes. Now in this case, since we're running BGP from provider edge to customer edge, we don't need to explicitly say redistribute BGP to BGP, but we do still need to configure the route targets. Now, what happened here on iOS XR is it received the routes in and they didn't have a target. The end result is that it simply deletes the routes. And the way that we can see this is to look at the debug BGP VPN v4 updates. Okay, this is what the iOS syntax is. Debug BGP VPN v4, is it unicast updates? Unicast updates. And for XR, this would be debug BGP, debug BGP, 
Then the address family is VPN v4, unicast, let's just say all. Okay, and then we'll say logging, console, debugging, and commit. Okay, so same on XR3. Debug BGP, address family, VPN v4, unicast. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is to cause a triggered update. So let's say from router 10's point of view, we're gonna send a triggered update out to router two, and then we'll see what happens when router two sends it to the rest of the, uh, the BGP speakers. So on router 10, I'm gonna configure a new loopback. Let's say we have loopback 10, address is 10, 0, 0, 10, slash 32. Okay, since I'm doing ready to be connected into BGP, this is gonna cause an IPv4 unicast update to go out to router two. Router two should receive this and say, I'm gonna now send an update for VPN version four. I'm gonna be sending the update out to the uh, route reflectors. So this goes to router one. Router one says, I received the update in from 2222. This is the specific path. The specific path is 2 colon 2 colon 10 0 0 10 slash 32. We also have a VPN label. We're assigning VPN label number 29 to this. So we're now sending this update out to the rest of the route reflector clients. Okay, this is coming in from VRFB. It's going from 2 to 1. 1 is reflecting it to XR3. When we look at this from XR3's point of view, let's see, debug, BGB, VPN, before unicast. Let's say the verbose. It may be that we're not uh, debugging high enough. Okay, so the loopback, let me shut that down. That's gonna cause a withdraw message. Then we will bring the interface back up. That should cause a new update. And we'll actually have to wait for the BGB advertisement interval to expire. Let's show run. Okay, so two got the update. And let's see, why is XR3 not receiving it? Let's say show log. And logging is enabled, console level is debugging. Uh, I wonder maybe this is not getting caught yet because it, it's being deleted before we see the, uh, the output. Let's say debug BGP. Let's just try to debug BGP. Uh, this I'll have to check later to see what specific debug we're looking for, but the, the point being is that the, the route reflector is getting the route, it's reflecting it back on, and when it goes to a remote neighbor, if we look at, for example, router three and do the same debug, it says we're denying the route because the extended community is not supported. Now, what this specifically means is that the community it's looking for is the route target. So when we receive the update inbound, we look at the extended communities, find the route target, and try to match them against our local VRF policies. So on router three, when we look at the show run VRF, under the VRF definition, we would normally have an import and export policy that defines what particular prefixes do we want to import from VPN v4 into the VRF, and, and what routes do we want to export from the customer back out to MPLS. So without the route target policy defined, the routes are being advertised without targets and eventually nobody can use them. So on router three here, let's say that we're gonna have under address family IPv4 
uh, for VRFA, we'll say the route target export is going to be 100 colon 100, and the route target import, or the route target uh, import is going to be the same, is 100 colon 100. Okay, we should now see, now the XR starts to get the, uh, the, uh, the output. Okay, the issue is that these, uh, these routes were getting dropped before it gets to the, the rest of the BGB process in terms of debugging. Uh, but it says we, we added a path, and the specific prefix is 1 colon 1 colon 7777 slash 32. If we now look at the show BGP VPN v4 unicast, we can now see that specific route. And if we look at the exact match for 7777 slash 32, for, we need to say for the, either the, v, the VRF or the route distinguisher, uh, the VRF is A, the prefix is 7777 slash 32. And we see that we have multiple paths. One's coming from the other reflector. One is coming directly from the CE. This is the one that should be the best route. Now, what is important about this is four things. One is the prefix and the distinguisher. Okay, the prefix in this case is 7777 slash 32. The route distinguisher is 1 colon 1. So these two values make up the actual route. Within the route, we then have the next hop value. So it says the next hop is 3333. I have an IGB metric of 20 to get there. So I do have a route to the next hop. Also, we have the received MPLS label, which is number 29, and the route target. So now XR1 is going to say, well, look at my local VRFs. Do I have a VRF that is importing the target 100 colon 100? If so, I'm then going to move it into that VRF table and potentially advertise it to that customer. But currently now, it says that it is not in a VRF. The reason why is that we don't have the route target import policy that is matching this particular value. So if we look at the show run VRF, we haven't specified what targets do we actually want to import in. So in this case, this route was coming from VRF A. So we're going to say on XR1, we want to import this under VRF A. So we'll say the import route target is 100 colon 100. And the export route target is likewise 100 colon 100. If we commit the change, we should see that BGB is going to generate new updates. And it may take a minute for the BGB update interval to expire. But if we look at now the show BGP, uh, same as we did before, show BGP VPN v4 unicast for that VRF and that specific route, we should now see that it was imported. Okay, it was imported specifically into VRF A. If we now look at the show route, VRF A, IPv4, Unicast, we're now learning 7777. Now, essentially, to do an any-to-any -any connectivity, we need to import and export the same values for the same VRF on the rest of the boxes. So in this spe specific case, under iOS XR, when we show run VRF, we're going to say that VRF A is going to use 100 colon 100. We'll say that VRF B is going to be using 200, 200. So B is 200, 200. Okay, this is being applied on XR3. Okay, that's the other device that has that other VRF. And then in terms of the regular iOS syntax, on router 7, if we show run VRF, Not on seven, on three. Show run VRF. This is the config we're going to put on router one. Okay, then B is going to have the target 200. And that goes on router two. Okay, notice on router 2, we still had that same error message. It says the routes were denied due to, due to the extended community not being supported. We should see now that some of them are going to be denied because we don't have 
VRF uh, B, but we do have, no, in this case we have which one? We have VRF, yeah, we do have VRF B. So we should see that we are installing some of these routes, okay, to the B IP table. And let's do an undebug. And then show BGP, VPN v4, unicast all. The devices that belong to the B table should be 10, 14, and 8. Okay, so in A, we have 4, 5, and 7. In B, we have 8, 10, and 14. Okay, so let's see if these are actually getting learned. From XR1's point of view, let's look at the show route VRF A, and it is learning 4, 5, and 7. Okay, we show route VRF B, it should be learning 8, 10, and 14. 8 it has, 10 and 14 it does not. Okay, what this means next is we need to look at from the PEs that were actually originating those routes, did they properly get exported into the, uh, to the, uh, the BGB process? It may be that we just need to clear the BGB table because they were already advertised without the route targets. We need to probably do a route refresh in order to add the new uh, attribute change onto them. So specifically in this case, we're not receiving 10, 10, 10, 10. Let's go down to router two and let's show BGP VPN v4 unicast for 10, 10, 10, 10. Unicast all. It says that it does have a route target, but let's go ahead and do a route refresh. So let's say clear BGP VPN v4 unicast star out. And then from XR1, let's see, did we receive this in? No, we didn't. Okay, let's look at, did XR1 receive it in the BGP table? Let's show BGP, VPN v4 unicast. And 10, 10, 10, 10 is there. So it's being learned in the table, but for some reason, it's lear being learned in BGP, but for some reason it's not in the VRF. Okay, what this either means is that router two did not properly export it with the target, or it means that XR1 did not properly import the target. So if we look at the show BGP, VPN v4 unicast for VRF B, the path is 10, 10, 10, 10, slash 32. It says the route target is 200 colon 200. So if we show run VRF, or if we just show VRF, show VRF what? Show VRF B, detail. It says there's no import communities. That's what the problem is. So I created this policy, but I didn't actually apply it onto XR1 was the issue. So let's import and export VRF B. And if we now show BGP for that route, it should say it was imported. Okay, if we show, show route VRF B, now we have 8, 10, and 14. Okay, likewise on router 1, if we show IP route VRF A, we should be learning 4, 5, and 7. Okay, router 3 should be doing the same thing. Show IP route VRF A. 4, 5, and 7. And on router 2, show IP route VRF B. We should be learning uh, 8, 10, 10, and 14. And then last but not least, on router XR3, show route VRF B we should be learning 8, 10, and uh, 14. Okay, so now we're to the point that all the edge routers have the VPN v4 updates. So we did the export policy when we, were, we received the route from the customer, we exported it to VPN v4, gave it a route target. That target was imported on the other side. This now means that we should be advertising the route to the eBGB neighbors. Like if we go over to router four on the left and show IP route BGP, 
Since it's part of VRF A, it should be learning 4, 5, and 7. Okay, right now it has 7, but it doesn't have 5. Okay, if we look at this from, let's say, router 10's point of view, on router 10, 10 if we show IP route BGP, we are learning uh, 8 and 14. Okay, 10 is local. So let's now look at this from, uh, from 10's point of view. From 10, if we do a ping to 8888, source the packet from the loopback zero, we see we have connectivity. If we do a trace route now, though, what we should see happen is that when the route goes to the first hop PE, it should be putting two separate labels on the label stack. The topmost label is going to be referencing the egress PE, that's the transport label, and then the one below that is going to be the VPN label, the one that was allocated by the VPN v4 advertisement, specifically the one advertised by XR1. Now really this depends on how many hops away that we are going. So let's see here, we're going to 2, 11, and then 8, which is directly We're going 2, 11, and then 8. So let's do this. Let's, let's turn off let's turn off these three links here, which on router 2, if we show IP interface brief, which those would be two eleven. 2.12 and 2.13. Okay, so now we should go a couple additional hops. We should be going to 2, then to 1, then 11 and 8. And now we can see we have the, uh, the two label stack. Now the way that we would read this is that number 26 is what router 2 should be using to reach the loopback of XR1. So from router 2's point of view, if we look at the show empty this forwarding table. It says the destination PE of 11, 11, 11, 11 has an outgoing label of 26. This is the one that we see as the transport label. When we then look at what is the final destination, the final destination is 8888, which is in the VPN table. So if we show BGP, VPN v4, unicast, all 8888-32, the VPN label number is 16,017, which was originated by that particular router.